and mother, mother-daughter relationships are so fraught. That's what she said. And and uh, she's like, you know, with Asians, it's like honey. And I was like, oh, I'm not too sure about that. But then um, I came across this line where you said, uh, in, in, in the gathering, you have, because the mother's love uh, is God. I can the characters are just said, well, um, mother's love is um, God. God's greatest church, and besides, who's to say what is the first and what is the final cause? And that left me confident. Uh, yes, I mean, listening to this beautiful romance, uh, from a daughter to a mother. It's not something that uh, I have ever written. And nor would I expect my daughter to write it. Um, I say, hey, I don't have a romance with my own mother, and I, I don't have a romance with my daughter either. And my daughter's so tired of herself. She's always competing with me. <laughs> I walk the streets of Dublin with the baby in a sling, and everyone smiles at me and at my child. Isn't he lovely, they say, assuming for some reason it's a boy. A man leans, toward, leans towards me on the bus. It's very hot, he says. I have some water, man, if you'd like to sponge the baby down. At home, Martin puts on her baby bro limb by tiny limb. Where did Napoleon put his armies, he says. In his sleeves. I watch them and think how impossible it all is. I can't see how this baby will grow into a person, any old person, a person like you or me or your boss or that middle-aged woman in the street. I cannot see where it all goes. The baby disappears into her own personality. She gets rounder. Her features begin to look strangely confined like a too small mask in the middle of her big round face. It's this stage that babies look like Queen Victoria or Winston Churchill or anyone fat and British as in charge. She is most imperious when her father picks her up. She sits in his arms and looks over at me as if to say, so who are you? I look completely different because I've got Sri Lankan hair now and it's become unbelievably unruly. So if you don't recognise the person, I am Rachel Johnson. And I'm so thrilled that you called when I read your God Wonder Me book, you called your baby when you said the great and lovely name of Rachel. I remember that. So I thought, yes, brave and lovely, exactly how I'm feeling. <laughs> To get a lot from a magazine is really, really, truly rewarding. Thank you. I've got, I had three babies in four years, and I find the experience brutal, and um, it, it sort of wiped me out physically, emotionally, intellectually. I didn't think I would ever write. Um, but then I started writing a column, and it was picked up. It, was, it moved from newspaper to newspaper, went from the Evening Standard to the Daily Telegraph. And then somebody from Penguin rang me up and said, we love your column, we want to make it into a book, and then we want you to write a novel. And I said, no problem. We were all in the kitchen. I was clearing up after the children's supper, and my husband came home early. He hugged all the children in turn, reserving his most lingering embrace for the puppy then turned to me with a strange light in his eyes, as if scanning a distant savannah for my grating wildebeest. I'm going to Africa, he said. For work, he added rapidly, as if I had otherwise assumed he and the model, Imar, were off on an undercover expedition to find the source of the Blue Nile or the flesh pots of Zanzibar. I thought I would uh do something a little bit different uh, in terms of the reading that I do. Rather than focus on mothering, I think I will focus on daughtering. I have recently become a mom. Uh, some of you may have heard some noises that bear evidence to the fact that I do indeed have a daughter who's sitting here. Uh, that's her. And I wrote a book about us coming together as a family, which is here, a problem in my heart. Yes, that's your book. But if there's a chance to talk about it later in the hour, I will. But for now, I would very much like to uh, read a bit um, 
about the work that I've done with my mother.